A very good afternoon. Welcome to BBC London. I'm Thomas McGill. More now on the independent report into the rape and murder of Sarah Everard in South London three years ago. The inquiry has concluded that Wayne Cousins should never have been a Metropolitan Police officer. And without a radical overhaul of police vetting and recruitment, there is nothing to stop another Cousins operating in plain sight. Our Home Affairs correspondent Sonia Jessup has sent this earlier from Clapham. Well, it's almost three years since Sarah Everard was murdered by a serving Met police officer, Wayne Cousins. He abducted her from the streets of Clapham, not far from here. He raped and killed her. And her death led to an outpouring of grief, of shock. And for many people, it shook their faith in policing. Well, today, an inquiry chaired by Lady Ailish Angelini has found that Wayne Cousins should never have been a police officer. And it's called for a radical overhaul of the way uh, police carry out their vetting and recruitment, and also the way that they investigate indecent exposure offences. Although Wayne Cousins was not wholly a product of his working environments, those environments did nothing to discourage his misogynistic view of women and meant that providing he presented himself as professional, his deviant behaviour outside of work could flourish. Policing leaders need to radically transform their approach to police culture if future offenders like Cousins are to be denied opportunities to abuse police powers for sexual purpose. The inquiry identified failings by the Met Police but also by Kent Police and the Civil Nuclear Constabulary where Cousins served earlier on in his career to pick up on those red flags and whether it be from his troubled financial situation, he was heavily in debt, or a series of indecent exposure allegations made against them. The inquiry found that police had treated those allegations as low level, and among the recommendations made are for that to change, for better guidance and training for police officers, also more rigorous vetting, home visits of applicants, and random checks throughout an officer's career. Sarah Everard's family said in a statement today that they were grateful for the inquiry's findings and they hoped it would bring about change and improvements to safety for women and girls. That was Sonia Jessup, our Home Affairs correspondent there. The London Borough of Havering says it secured the necessary assurances from the government to avoid effectively going bankrupt. The council says a so-called capitalisation direction for £53 million to help them balance their books has been confirmed. Havering is also planning to raise council tax in April by the maximum allowed. MPs have been told pedicabs are turning the West End into the Wild West End during a Commons debate on a new bill to regulate them. The Conservative MP for the cities of London and Westminster, Nicky Aiken, says they have become an overwhelming nuisance. The bill was passed by MPs and will now go to the House of Lords. Front of House theatre staff are facing more abuse from audience members than ever before, with some reporting threats of violence and even sexual harassment. Beck too, who represents theatre staff, say bad behaviour at the theatre has got a lot worse since the pandemic, as Alice Bandekravi reports. From chatting or heckling during the performance to abusive and drunken behaviour, these are some of the issues playing out in Theatreland from the auditorium. And according to the workers' union Bechtu, the problem is getting worse. Behaviours have uh, deteriorated post-pandemic, so whether it's a case of people forgetting how they're supposed to behave in theatres or whether it's just generally that um, standards are, are dropping, I'm not quite sure. But some of these behaviours are really shocking and our members who are the lowest paid um, who, who work in theatres just really shouldn't have to experience that when they're at work. London's entertainment sector is relieved that audiences have come back, albeit cautiously, to live performance. But what is it about having been cooped up during the pandemic that has led to this shift in behaviour? Are we really more rowdy? And if so, why? According to an academic who studies audience behaviour, since lockdown we've been seeing a greater sense of what she calls selfish individualism. I think... To some extent, that's what we're seeing here. Why should I be told what I should be doing when I've paid a lot of money for this experience and what I want is to come along to get drunk, to sing along and to have a nice chat with friends? Why should I be told 
that I'm not allowed to do that. But it's still relatively rare for audiences to behave badly. Kush Jumbo is currently starring in Macbeth with David Tennant at the Donmar Warehouse. Audiences are interesting, aren't they? But the theatre is still something that hasn't changed for years. And but our audiences obviously have changed. We're on our phones. We have a short retention span. We're different. And if audiences are different, what does it say about us as a society more generally? Well, that is less clear. Alice Bandukravi, BBC London. Tonight's People's Question Time, where the public get the chance to ask the Mayor Sadiq Khan questions, has been moved online after heckling took place at the last event. City Hall took the decision to cancel the in-person meeting, which was due to happen in Richmond, saying they had some safety concerns. All parties on the London Assembly, including Labour, have been opposed to the Mayor's decision. With just two months until Londoners go to the polls again the, to vote for the next mayor, there are a few important changes to the whole process this time round. Susanna Mendonca explains all you need to know. The voting system for who runs London from here has changed. To explain, I've brought toys. Voters used to have a first choice and a second choice for who they wanted to be Mayor of London. If your first choice was knocked out of the race, but your second choice made it to the next round, your second vote would still be counted. And the winner had to get more than 50% of voters' support to become the Mayor. That was the supplementary vote system, where voters could choose a candidate that they liked without worrying that their vote would be wasted. But the government changed the law two years ago to make the London mayoral election use the same system that we use to select MPs in Parliament. That's first past the post. Under this system, you only back one horse. So voters will only get to choose one candidate on the ballot paper for Mayor of London. The winning candidate doesn't have to win over a majority of voters, they just need to get more votes than anyone else in the race. The way you vote for the London Assembly, which holds the Mayor to account here, will stay the same. You'll vote once for a constituency member and once for a London-wide Assembly member. But another big change on polling day will be voter ID, because for the first time in a London mayoral election, voters will have to take photographic identification, like a passport or a driver's licence, to the polling station to be allowed to vote. If not, they'll be turned away. And if you don't have any suitable ID, you can apply for a voter authority certificate. Susanna Mendonca reporting there and that takes us to the weather with Corsa. Hello, good afternoon. Well, it's been quite a wet day so far. As captured here by one of our weather watchers in Reigate in Surrey, a rather grey picture here, that rain will continue for a time. It will become drier overnight, but then low pressure is dominating our weather for tomorrow and the start of the weekend with further outbreaks of rain for a time and windier conditions as well. But the winds are light for this afternoon. We still have that rain around for many and temperatures, while still mild for the time of year, highs of 10 to 12 Celsius. Now, that rain will continue for a time to start the evening, but it will clear away towards the southeast. And overnight tonight, it does become drier with clearer skies. And this will allow it to become quite chilly as temperatures quite widely dip to low single figures. But by the end of the night, outbreaks of rain and strengthening winds across from the west. Another weather front bringing some outbreaks of rain for a time for tomorrow morning. A bit of wintriness up over the hills. That will clear through and then we're left with blustery showers, a windy afternoon and a bit cooler temperatures reaching around 7 to 9 Celsius with some bright spells in the mix. Quite unsettled to start the weekend as well with some further scattered showers and temperatures again around 9 Celsius. And by the time we reach Sunday, well, we are expecting some drier weather with some sunshine in store. And that's your forecast. Well, that's it from me for now. Check out the BBC News app to hear from some leaplings or people born on the 29th of February who only have a birthday every four years. So a big happy birthday to you today. That's it. Assad will be here at 6.30. Until then, have a lovely afternoon. Bye-bye.